Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show where we love Seattle pro sports. I'm your host, Mikey, and today I got another Seattle Seahawks seven-round mock draft for you. The night I'm recording this, we are exactly two weeks away from the actual draft, and I'm getting excited for that, but we still got some time left to play out these scenarios to see what the Seahawks could do to find out if we would like it or not. All right, so let's jump into this one. Uh, get this thing started and see what could happen and at the end we will find out if we would like it uh, and will give us uh, some grades okay we got one trade offer on the table who's still on the table uh, to draft on the board we got Latu, Verse, Fatanu, Latham, uh, Brian Thomas Jr., Newton, Murphy, Robinson, Wiggins, Dejean, Barton, Powers Johnson they're all still on the table but Let's take this trade with Miami because we send them 16 and we get their 21 and 55. So we're picking up that second round pick. um, And, you know, I want to get some more players in that range if I can to get some more players to help this team out. Okay, now at um, 21... On the table still is Brian Thomas Jr., Newton, Murphy, Robinson... Wiggins, uh, uh, Barton, Powers Johnson. Uh, but we got a couple more trade offers on the table. I think I'm going to do this one with Kansas City because we are going to send them 21 and 102 for their 32, 64, and a 2025 20, second round pick. So we're moving back to the end of the first round, but we're moving that uh, fourth round pick to you know the end of the second round so i like that you know getting even more value in that range so let's do that one let's find out what happens at pick 32 here uh we got a handful of offers on the table but we'll look at who's available barton powers johnson uh adane mitchell bo Nix, uh jordan morgan christian haynes but let's take a look at what these offers are uh, Indy, I think for that for us, that's moving too far back. In fact, both of our picks are moving back, so that doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess they're sending us a second round pick for next year, but no, nah, nah, I don't want to do that. Uh, Dallas, no, nah, I'm moving too far back as well. Oh, here we go. Here's one from Carolina. They must really want one of these players because, um, and they and again they know that there's other teams offering us. So we have 32. They have. 33 so the first pick in the second round they'll send us 33 and pick 142 for our pick 32 so we're moving back just one spot we'll take it uh and now here we are pick 33 a couple offers that i'm not interested in uh okay so here we are 33 well, and I'll say I'm not interested in them uh, for w- the purposes of what we're doing here. Okay, so again, here we are, 33, and um, making our first pick here, we've accumulated a few picks uh, in the second and uh, yeah, in this in this second round here. So we got three picks in the second round. Um. So again, we're able to kind of, you know, make some decisions we might not have been able to if we had just stuck at 16 and then waited till 81. Uh, Now this is a preference here because Graham Barton and Powers Johnson are still both available here. Again, a lot of teams have been listing Barton as a center in Jackson Power Johnson already. We already know as that, but either of them could be playing guard. Uh, And for me, I am the way I'm going to go with this is, you know, just watching Powers Johnson and, you know, the the level of play that he's did throughout the season, the senior bowl, his workout. It's just very impressive. So I'm going to say that's done enough 
for me to pick Powers Johnson over Barton if I'm if they're both at the top of the board and uh, I have you know and I'm picking and that's my choice I I'm going to pick Powers Johnson in this scenario and say hey you're my new starting uh, left guard okay uh, so we're getting them here let's find out what happens uh, for us at pick 55 uh, and a few choices here again we're kind of lucky that you know we got those trade offers because now we have more choices to make sure that we can pick up multiple players uh that we that we like in this range i think so there's there's players like devondre sweat xavier leggett uh Leonard Taylor, Michael Hall Jr. is available here, Braylon Trice, um, Chris Jenkins, Peyton Wilson, Braden Fisk, right, Brandon Dorless. Like, yo, yeah, we still got some good players available to us here. Uh, we're at 55. We, we got the guard. We, we, we still need to, uh, in my eyes, let's see here. Did, yeah, somebody already took Edrin Cooper. You know, I'm afraid that there's going to make a, a, a run on linebackers, and we want our guy. Mike McDonald wants his guy, so we're taking Junior Colson at 55 here. Okay, then some more trade offers that we're not going to go with, because again, we, we still got some great, um, you know, we we ended up with some great value here in this second round, and now at, at pick sixty four, we can still get some really good uh, players. Now, tough choices here, right? Who who do you want to go with? Leonard Taylor the third, Michael Hall Jr., um, Braden Fisk, all defensive tackles that you could take. Um, let's see here. Malachi Corley, the receiver, is here. Uh, Bo Braid out of Maryland is here. The safety. Brandon Dorless, the edge, uh, here. Uh, Marshawn Neeland, Cole Bishop, Christian Mahogany. You know, we, we got, we definitely have choices. Oh, Javon Bullard available here. Uh, Trevin Wallace. Uh, hmm. Okay, so uh, here at pick 64, let me, let me think. Uh, I don't, I don't believe we've ever taken Michael Hall Jr. in any of these mocks that we've done, you know, and yeah, he could be uh a really good choice for you and again yeah we have a lot of you know resources in the position already but now you know at this point we're talking about uh you know we've accumulated extra picks so we can get we can get uh talent at the top of the board and, and still make sure that we're fitting needs later i mean we're talking about taking a 6'3", 290-pound guy, um, you know, that, um, you know, can, uh, you know, he, you know, he, he's, he's a twitchy defensive tackle um, that can get into the backfield. So that's, you know, he is um, a possibility because he's going to be, uh, giving you pass rush from the position uh, right away, right? Uh, that's not that's not bad. Um, again, we still have uh, other players available as well, uh, like Leonard Taylor. Um, again, Braden Fisk. I know a lot of people are fans of Braden Fisk. I myself, I am a fan of Braden Fisk. Um, you love to see, you know, the the um, the uh, 
athleticism that he's shown throughout this process. Uh, Cole Bishop, you know, he's here. I have something else in mind for that uh, potentially, though. So let's let's go ahead. Um, let let's take. Uh, where did I miss it? Because we're you know again we're choosing between Leonard Taylor, Michael Hall, and Braden Fisk. Uh, it's close for me on all of them. I'm I'll take. Um, It really is tough now. <laughs> I, 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 I have to uh, really give this one some thought. I mean, because I really like the way Braden Fisk has worked out during this process as well, right? Uh, I mean, and again, you're talking, you know, a, a guy that um, I think I think he's a better run defender, right? So he can. He can he can he can run and still pass rush as well, um, yeah. So I I think I am I am going to give the uh, edge here to Braden Fisk, even though they have him lower here on the board. I'm gonna I'm gonna take him here. I'm taking Braden Fisk. Okay, and then uh, here we are, pick eighty one. Still got some uh players available to us let's see what what we want to do here okay and then our next pick doesn't come till 81 uh cole bishop is still available uh here at 81 and at, at this point and who oh, and javon bullard is still available as well both of these guys, I'm going to have a hard time uh, passing up on. Um, for me, Cole Bishop out of Utah, I think that's where I'm going with it. Um, so let's let's take let's take Cole Bishop here at 81, and then our next pick is going is not going to be until 118, and we'll see who's available. We do got one trade offer. Let's see. And we'll go ahead and take it because we're moving back one spot. We're sending 118 to Pittsburgh for 119 and 195. So we'll pick up an extra pick uh, later in the in the draft. Uh, let's see here. Why not? We'll send 119 and our 2025 seventh round pick to Tampa Bay for their 125 and their 162. Okay, and now here we are at 125. Again, we're in that um, fourth ish <laughs> round range. So I'm going to go down here on their board, what they have here. Uh, and I will get Zach Zinter here. Again, we are getting another offensive lineman to fill out the rest of that room and could be competing for a starting job, potentially. Uh, let's see who else is available around here. We're at pick 142. I don't want to miss out uh, on getting a player like, uh, where'd he go, Tyrese Knight here. If I can get Tyrese out of UTEP, uh, at this point in the draft, you know, at, and then based off of all the other picks that we've already made, I feel pretty good about that. So I'm going to take Tyrese Knight here. Our next pick comes at 162. Boy, we did pick up a lot of picks in this one, didn't we? Uh, through these trades. Okay. We still got uh, quite a bit to do. We're at 162 here. Uh,. You know, and, and to me, that's a good thing because, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, really filling out some needs and maybe potentially picking up some uh, surprise players. Let's see here. We're at 162. Where, where can we go? Uh, we still... 
I'm going to take a closer look at each position group just to kind of see what's available at each position so I make sure I don't like miss miss out on something that I want just by scrolling through uh Okay, so looking at what we have here, yeah, okay, well, based on what we have uh, and, and where we're, we're picking here, I think I'm going to go with the defensive tackle, Justin Aguabe, out of Alabama, uh, here at pick 154. Or not 154. They have ranked 154. I pick 162, and uh, again, we're we're still adding just some young players to fill out depth for that defensive line. Okay, now 179. Uh, we still have. Okay, so again, we've gotten a couple of linebackers, but. Um, you know, there's still safety. We got, yeah, we got Cole Bishop, um, Evan Williams, Josh Proctor. Let's see. Well, again, here where we are. Yeah, where, where we are here. Let's go ahead. Let's take Tanner McLaughlin here. Uh, get another tight end to fill out the rest of our tight end room and get a good receiving tight end for the team. Our next pick here is at 192. We got a lot of picks in this draft. <laughs> uh, at 192. Uh, oh, Tip Raymond uh, was there as well. We could have took him, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Let, let's get... Let's get a uh, linebacker out of Washington, Edwafon Olafashayo, uh, here at pick 192. Again, getting some depth. Uh, somebody who was, uh, you know, one of the better defenders on that Washington team. And now we're at pick 195. And at 195, okay, well... Well, at this point, yeah, we're at 195. Edvin Williams still available. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, let, let's go ahead and let's do that because... He's still available here, <laughs> and we could fill out again. We got so many safeties again with just one year deals as well. Uh, so we get Evan Williams. We're filling out uh, that safety room, getting some uh, more depth players that we're going to be around for some years. And um, here we are, pick two thirty five now, and all right, well. Uh, at this point, you know we we got we got uh, Powers Johnson that we want to be a guard. We want we got Zinter who's going to be a guard. Um, but here, so if we want somebody like truly to be a backup uh, at center in, in, instead of like you know a, an old veteran, we can get we can get younger and um, develop. We can get Drake Nugent here. Again, get a couple of Michigan centers, uh, you know, duking it out for the starting position or, you know, for, for depth there. So there you go. We'll take Drake Nugent there. And my goodness, that finally fills out this draft where we picked up so many picks. I mean, how many did we get in total? There's four, eight, uh, 11. So we picked up like four extra picks in this draft. Plus we got that 2025 second round pick. But the way this worked out for us, we got Powers Johnson with our first pick, uh, the first pick of the second round. 
uh, moving him to guard, uh, you know, getting a, 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 an actual, you know, offensive line for our quarterback, Junior Colson coming in, you know, competing for a starting job right away and understanding the Mike McDonald system right away because he's been doing it for years, you know, started as a true freshman for Mike McDonald, so he's been doing it. A long time has proven that he can be successful in this system. Braden Fisk coming in here, uh, you know, he's going to be the guy that, uh, you know, is eventually maybe replacing Jaron Reed, um, you know, uh, you know, potentially uh, replacing somebody like, um, you know, who I'm trying to think of. I've been, it's getting late. I can't, <laughs> I can't think. Um, Draymond Jones, that's who I'm thinking. You know, if, if they decide that he doesn't work out the way uh, they want him to, they can um, move on from him and, and have Braden Fisk for the next four years. Then we got Cole Bishop, uh, you know, again, same deal. You know, a lot of safeties, one-year deal. He, he And he's somebody who could be pushing for his starting job this year, right? And then, you know, at worst, you, you're hoping he's developing and starting by year two. Zach Zinter, hoping he gets healthy, ready to go, and eventually becomes one of your starting guards. Um, you know, Tyrese Knight, some more depth at linebacker. Uh, Justin Aguabe, out of Alabama, you know, that big boy out of Alabama. Uh, again, more some more depth for your defensive line. Tanner McLaughlin, that's working out for your, uh, you know, for getting you some uh, more depth in that tight end room and more receiving options. Ed Wafan, Olaf Ashayo, filling out more depth in that linebacker room. Evan Williams, you know, again, more safety depth. You know, a couple, now you have a couple of young safeties that you'll have on the roster for, you know, a handful of years to come instead of everybody, uh, you know, being off the roster next year. And then picking up Drake Nugent late uh, to, uh, you know, help get some depth on that offensive line as well, some younger depth uh, that can hopefully develop to be better, even even if he's just a backup, hopefully he's a better backup than what we have at the moment. So there you go. There, there, There's the draft. Let me know what you would grade this one. Um, lots of trades <laughs> that we, we, we worked out in this one that got us a lot of picks. Uh, so, yeah, let me know how you feel, uh, you know, with the players that we ended up with this. All right? Give me those grades, A, B, C, D, F. Um, you know, we're just three subscribers away from 200 right now. So if you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and then, you know, if you're listening on a podcast version, please subscribe, follow, uh, and leave a five-star rating and a written review because that helps the show as well. And thank you so much for listening to the Seattle Sports Show where we watch Legends Awaken, so take cover because with the sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever.